So Laplace's equation in three dimensions is uh, d squared by dx squared of the potential plus d squared by dy squared of the potential plus d squared by dz squared of the potential all has to equal zero. Okay, And I, I can't give you a good example of this. There's nothing really intuitive um, in uh, your typical life that really helps you see what is really going on here. It's kind of hard to extrapolate the rubber sheet on top of... Uh, you know, that odd shape I gave you in the last lecture, two, three dimensions. Uh, but the two facts are consistent. One, uh, the uh, potential at a point is the average of the neighbors. Two, that um, there is no local max or min. Okay, so the extremes are going to occur on the boundary conditions for whatever solution you find. Um, so proving one, um, we're going to use the example that um, you've seen about 20 million times now. So we have um, a sphere centered on the origin, okay, and then we have up here a point charge Q, okay. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate what the potential is at the center of the origin based on what the potential is at each, each part of that sphere. Okay, so um, really quickly, there's a radius r here. Uh, this is the height um, r, which is the distance from the origin of the, of the sphere. And so let's write things out. So we expect, um, so the, or, the potential at the origin should just be um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r. So that's the answer we're looking for. So let's walk through this. Uh, this integral. Um, try to save some paper here. So we start out with the V average equals the surface area of the sphere, 1 over 4 pi r squared, um, times the integral of the potential for each of the points on that sphere. Okay, so writing that out in longhand, we have 1 over 4 pi r squared times the integral of the sphere. The potential is at any point along there is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge divided by the distance from a point on that sphere to the charge. And that distance is given by the law of cosines as the square root of r squared plus capital R squared minus 2r capital R cos theta. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to need that extra space there. And the, um, and the uh, dA in spherical coordinates is the radius squared sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, the next step we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring out some terms. That's the surface area of the sphere. And then we're going to bring out 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we can bring out Q because that's constant. And we're going to have the integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi. And the integral from 0 to pi of theta. So we're going to have sine theta d theta all over the square root of r squared plus r squared minus 2 r, r cos theta. And we've actually solved an integral like this before, so um, I'm gonna walk through how you do that um, rather quickly. So we're gonna choose um, u to be equal to the square root of that stuff on the inside. So r squared plus r squared minus 2 r, r cos theta. And so du is going to be equal to the derivative of the outside, which is 1 half, 1 over u times the derivative of the insides. That's, um, oh gosh, is there a negative sign there? There should be. Yes? No? Oh, here we go. Okay, so we have minus 2 r r, and the derivative of cosine theta would be negative sine theta. This is multiplied d theta. So those negative signs do cancel. So we have 1 over 2 u. Oh, this cancels, that cancels. 
So we get RR sine theta d theta. And uh, not to get ahead of myself, but um, where did my r squared go? Um, my r squared disappeared. There he is. He's back. Um, so I want to have this. I'm going to multiply by r. Divide by r. And I get u d theta, right? And that, that looks like an easy integral to solve, particularly when you see that this is the inside of that integral. So let's continue working along here. Uh, Q, integral from zero to pi of phi is two pi. And then we have r du over r. So r and r can be pulled out. No, r, little r can't be. So we have r, let's pull out the r. So we have du over r u. No, r can be pulled out. It's a constant because we're not, we're not varying r. Okay? du over u. So I pulled out this r and this r and they're right here right now. And that becomes a really easy integral to solve. And the integral of there is just, uh, let's see. Um, is it one? No. No, I don't have that u. It's just du. So it becomes u evaluated. Well, when theta is 0, then u becomes, let's see, cosine theta is 1, so it becomes the square root of r minus r squared. And when theta is pi, it becomes the square root of r plus r squared. Okay, completing the square in there. And so that equals, let's start canceling some terms out here. Let me pull out a different color marker. Okay, so 2 pi, boom, boom, leaving a 2. R, boom, boom. Where'd my R squared go? Oh, that's right, it's just R. Okay. We have an R in the bottom. We have a Q over R. We have 1 over R. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 over 1 half R. Okay. So this inside bit here, so we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Q over 2 R, R. And then we have the square root of this. Now, I forgot to tell you this, but uh, the square root is equal to, the square root of a square is equal to the absolute value, almost by definition. Okay, so when we plug this all in, we get um, r plus r minus r minus r. Okay, now as long as r is bigger than as long as r is bigger than big r, little r is bigger than big r, this is going to be positive on the inside. So it's going to be equal to the positive of this. And the same for this. This is always going to be positive unless we start going negative, which we're not. So it becomes r plus r minus r plus r, because we distribute that minus sign. And so we these two cancel, and we have 2r. Okay? Um, and I did run out of paper. Oh, well. So wrapping things up here, we get the potential of the average um, Q divided by the 2R cancels the 2R, so we have just an R in the bottom. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we expected it to be. And I wasted a whole piece of paper just to write the answer. <laughs> so there we go. It turns out to the same. So um, I, I didn't really prove that, that it worked, that uh, this is true everywhere. I just proved that it works. Um, and, and if you want a more exhaustive proof, you can probably think about it for a while and, and understand why the average has to be the way it is. Um, so fortunately, you know, time doesn't provide me to give more complete proof of this. Um, and of course, we want to move on to learn more about electrodynamics. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this film. Take care.